Okay, now let's give it up for Caitlin Hall, who's coming up next. So Caitlin is completing a Master's of Marine Biology at San Francisco State. Her research focuses on abyssopelagic phytoplankton flux and its role in climate change mitigation through carbon sequestration. <laughs> a real crowd pleaser. Caitlin is a musician, a writer, and a pug enthusiast. Do your grandparents print off chain emails and send them to you using a physical mailing service <laughs> rather than forwarding them electronically? Or perhaps your Aunt Marion has an utterly unjustified loyalty to fax machines. Maybe your father sends you text messages of incomprehensible word salad after losing yet another battle with autocorrect. <laughs> Certain older relatives possess an inability to operate basic technology in spite of numerous lessons given to them by their offspring. After explaining to a parent how to reset the modem when the Wi-Fi goes out, a simple procedure, for the seventh time in a month, one may begin to feel as though one's relative is deliberately forgetting. To an extent, that suspicion is correct. The chronic inability of older relatives to use basic technology is a nurturing strategy designed to increase contact time with young. <laughs> Note, it works whether you're required to create fire or fix the Wi-Fi. In prolonging contact time with their young, whether through asking for lessons and unlocking cell phone screens, or announcing the death of a distant cousin in the comment section of an irrelevant social media post, <laughs> <laughs> older relatives produce priceless opportunities to develop their young's patience and teaching abilities, skills that will be useful when the younger generation, in turn, raises children of its own. The self-restraint required when, for instance, your grandmother downloads spyware, asks you to remove it, and then months later accuses you of giving her a virus when she downloads it again, is considerable and will help an individual with child rearing. <laughs> Using a modified Verhulst equation, we can study the effect of the presence of technologically illiterate elders on population growth and stability. Multiplying the number of older relatives in one's life who regularly exhibit a lack of technological proficiency by the number of monthly relevant incidences, such as when a parent writes a full URL on a sticky note rather than preserving it as an online link, <laughs> one obtains the value dubbed the Elderly Technological Struggle Index, ETSI, represented in the equation by the variable E. Here, you can see the original population dynamics equation in contrast with my modified equation. And here, the resulting models. Note the longer exponential growth stage and higher carrying capacity of the updated model below. Older relatives develop technological illiteracy as a final stage of case-selected evolutionary strategy. Increased parental investment in the development of young allows for a more stable population when approaching carrying capacity. It is no coincidence that the advent of social media and the ensuing bizarre use of this platform by your parents comes at a time at which this global population is at its highest in this planet's history. <laughs> what manifests itself as the inability to progress past the Cold War era in technological proficiency is a distinct stage in an adult human's life history. Let's turn to neurobiology. Gene expression is known to change with age. In a study, investigators noted changes in the hypothalamus and cortex of aging mice. Key genes associated with neuronal structure and signaling are expressed differently in aging individuals. Some of, the gene expressions, uh, some of the gene expression changes were found to be the opposite of those that occur in mice exposed to enriched environments, likely an indicator of decreased learning ability. If these mice had cell phones, surely their camera roll would be full of photos accidentally taken of the insides of their tiny pockets after forgetting <laughs> to set their lock screens. Some believe this to be a response to oxidative stress. But I suggest that it is instead merely a physical indicator of an aging relative's evolutionary need to extend parental care through constant pestering about how to change the input settings on the remote. Perhaps the onset of senility is the consequence of a natural process gone too far. I anticipate that Moore's Law, a principle related to ever-increasing technological advances, will result in today's exasperated offspring becoming technologically baffled in time to properly nurture young of their own. Support for these ideas can be found in numerous peer-reviewed papers, all of which are behind a paywall. <laughs> Similarly, the 
tendency of older relatives to make social media posts espousing out of touch and occasionally highly offensive takes on politics and current events <laughs> is in fact an instinctual tactic to instigate young into practicing critical thinking and harnessing <laughs> rage into survival skills. Homologous to the proposed evolutionary function of tickling as a way through which children develop <laughs> combat and defensive skills. <laughs> Your Uncle Barney's Facebook status that could be mistaken for semi-literate propaganda from the 1950s serves as a training ground for your compelling arguments. The time poured into cultivating well-thought-out counterpoints by perplexed younger relatives, only to receive an equally offensive retort from the original poster who clearly did not read your comment all the way through, is not, as previously believed, an exercise in futility. It is an exercise in combat tactics, requiring thoughtfulness and patience that will inevitably aid the younger relative during the ever-approaching nuclear winter. <laughs> in conclusion, the next time your great aunt Barbara comments publicly on a photo of you and a coworker to ask if that's your new significant other, know that she really is doing it in your best interest. So, as my dearly departed grandmother used to say, shut up and respect your elders. <laughs>